Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. And I'm David Kerr. And we're going to be looking at topics that are of interest to our community, both regionally and to the state. Hello, I'm David Kern. Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. Tonight we're talking about a very important issue in Spotsylvania County, and that's the future of baseball in the county. There's currently a proposal before the Spotsylvania Board of Supervisors to build a stadium and to recruit the franchise of the, of the uh, Hagerstown Suns to come to uh, Spotsylvania. It's a major project. It's going to cost about $33 million, $27 million of that roughly being shouldered by Spotsylvania County. We're going to hear from sides both pro and con, and with me right now is the chairman of the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors, uh, Chris Jakubowski. Welcome, sir, and thank, thank you. you for being on Rappahannock Issues. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to go into some of the history and the structure of this proposal. If you kind of give us an overview of how we got here. Sure. How, was, how did baseball end up in Spotsylvania County? Right. Uh, well, back in uh, the fall of last year, what had occurred was uh, we met with Fredericksburg about putting a stadium in Fredericksburg. And when that deal fell apart, we asked the question, why not Spotsylvania? And since Spotsylvania is actually in the Richmond Flying Squirrels territory, Major League Baseball had to give a waiver to even explore into our county. And they've given you that waiver? They gave us that waiver with a deadline of May 31st. And so that deadline was fast approaching. There are so many moving parts to this that we decided at last week's special meeting to ask for an extension uh, till the end of July. Uh, do you think you're going to get that extension? Because that's been a kind of an open question. Right, well, we're hoping we do, because uh, it, it would be a good fit to have baseball here, and we hope that baseball realizes that uh, Sponsylvania would be a great home for the Suns. Well, and that's a question that I think a lot of people have. Uh, I'm, I know you're not a, a big baseball fan, which I think right. is interesting, uh, but you see this from an economic development standpoint is very positive. I'm a big baseball fan. Okay. I don't know how many people in the area are and whether they'll go, whether you can get the attendance at a, at a minor league baseball team that... Uh, True. I mean, some of the enthusiasts, like me, might show, might show up, but I'm kind of wondering about how much you'll get from the community. Well, I, I think it's larger than baseball. It's not simply going to, to see a baseball team. It's about the family-friendly uh, atmosphere that is there because it's more than a stadium. There is a playground area. Um, in the winter, it'll be an ice, uh, a skating uh, area. Uh, there's other features to the stadium so that when you go, you don't have to sit in the bleachers and watch baseball. Um, there's also been a lot of discussion about how this contributes to community identity. Uh, mm -hmm. The late Paul Akers, who used to write for the Freelance Star, uh, always always supported baseball. He wrote a column about it about once a week. Right. And his principal argument had very little to do with the capital cost, the acquisition, or anything of that. It was the, the community identity. Right. Is that where you're coming from? Part of it, absolutely. I mean, uh, dealing with economic development and, and working with our EDA and working with our economic development office for the past uh, year and a half and the, my previous term on the board also, uh, you realize that you really need something to set you apart, more than just being the last stop below Fredericksburg on the commuting part of I-95. So we need to have something that identifies ourselves, that we can show, um, show off to prospective businesses and, and other people that want to come here. And it really sets us apart from our neighbors and Northern Virginia who we compete against you know, on a daily basis. 
Well, the, the deal is, it, like you said, it has a lot of moving parts, and there's certainly been some opposition on, on the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, I've heard some people complain that the deal isn't the best deal we could have gotten. Right. What's your feeling about that statement? Well, that's why we're taking 60 days to get an even better deal. Oh, that's a, no, that's a bit right. of news. You're actually going back to the table to... Right. We're, read, we're, we're taking the, the concerns and the questions that the community and board members and EDA members had, taking it back, compiling that, getting the answers, and putting together a better deal for the county. But do you, um, and it's very hard to project the future of seven votes. Right. And, yes. Of course, you have to count to four. Right. But uh, that said, do you think there's enough change that might occur in the current outline of the contract uh, to possibly sway a vote or two? Well, I'm hoping. That, that's why I think that opening up this process and having everybody's input, uh, no matter how um, far out it might be or how different it might be, but have that brought in, get the answers, because I think there's a lot of misinformation about what this deal is all about, how it's structured, who pays what, why it's even done, and if it is you know, the, the proper role of government to even be involved in this. So I think when we get those answers done, I think we can present a better product to the, to the public and not only do that, but do that with enough time that they can digest what has been proposed and see uh, and get their buy-in because without having the community buy-in, this project will fail. Now, um, one thing that uh, I've been reading is how, it's going, how the EDA bonds uh, are going to be financed. Mm -hmm. uh, roughly, say we borrow $27 million worth, that the projected revenue stream to repay those bonds will come from the future development or current revenue generated by South Point 1 and 2. Right. Uh, that, is, is that, is, is a, it's a vibrant economic area. Do you see that, that being built out in time to provide the revenue stream you're looking for? Well, I mean, that, that is the risk. We, we don't know what the future holds but there is a very good chance that that will happen. And we only looked at real estate taxes. We did not look at uh, any of the taxes that are generated from the sales at the stadium themselves, nor meals tax, bee pole tax, machine and tools tax, furniture and fixtures tax, any other tax was not even considered. And uh, it still was able to generate enough money to pay back the bonds. As I understand, is it uh, the Davenport Company that, yes. that, that did the economic analysis? Yes. Uh, one complaint I've heard mm -hmm. is that it didn't factor in uh, future operations and maintenance adequately or renovations that might have to occur down the road. Were, were, they, were they included or, well, or is that, that really have to? They, they, were, they were partially included, uh -huh. put it that way. The, um, the full scope of that needs to be vetted out, absolutely. And that's why we, we put the brakes on last week. Or we tap the brakes, I should say, <laughs> and uh, we allow or, or we ask for this extension because we are, at least I am, very interested in moving this along and want to have that time to put together a good deal. And hopefully, baseball sees that that we're not dragging our feet to drag our feet. We're trying to get the best deal possible for the citizens of Spotsylvania. Well, one, one thing that we're getting towards the end of our session. I, I know there's been a lot of opinion and a lot of strong on both sides. Right. Uh, what have you been hearing from your constituents? From, from my oh, constituents? But as chairman, you also hear from people around the, the Oh, county. I hear from everybody. Yeah, everybody likes to call. And, uh, and what, what I hear is a lot of misinformation that is out there. And when I actually talk to folks about what the deal truly is, their mind starts to change. And, and I think a lot of the hesitation was simply because the public only knew about this for about a week. I knew about it and other board members, well, the whole board knew about it since November. So we need to make sure that the public is, is brought up to speed on everything that is happening and that we present it to them so that they can question what's going on and they can feel comfortable with what is happening. But once I think people see the benefits for this, I think that they're going to be enthusiastic about supporting it. I do want to thank you for being on our program. It was a very good synopsis of the project and the issues uh, you're currently addressing and what you expect down the road. Very much. That was great. I want to thank you thank for being you. on our program. Appreciate it. Really been great. Thank you. Thank you.